seen two hugely dominant performances in both the men's and the women's. Look at the women's first, Barry. Gwen Jorgensen, back-to-back -back wins, and it, she did it so easily. Yeah, you know, well, we saw some of those streaks happen in the past. Paula Finley, uh, Vanessa Fernandez. When you get on those kinds of streaks and you are the best athlete in the world at that time, it's almost impossible to beat her. And they only had one chance. They had to get away on the bike early. They didn't do it. Gwen Jorgensen ran away and still had another gear. Do you think Moffitt could have got away on the bike, Chris, or was there just nothing she could do about it? I don't think so. I think that, you know, with the conditions and stuff, it would have been a bit more risk than reward. But uh, she had a great race, and, you know, Gwen running 32.40 uh, was just... Just phenomenal. Yeah, fantastic. And how are they going to stop her now? I mean, she looks almost unbeatable at the moment. Yeah, well, we've had, like like Barry said, we've had yeah. these streaks before, and it, it takes evolution to get back in it. So the girls are going to have to really get together and work out, you know, how are we going to fix this issue? And at the moment, we've got a bit of Gwen Sanity rolling around, yeah. and she's doing the damage. Yeah, she's going to be tough to beat. Three for three, though, Chris. Yeah. Uh, my picks, uh, I think one of your picks missed the podium. Yeah, well, uh, you know, but she didn't miss the ground. She Kayleigh's was on the did. ground twice. Yeah, yeah. M Mikey and Kayleigh's unfortunately uh, managed to hit the ground twice, but uh, still came fifth. Showed some yeah. tremendous yeah. courage, and uh, yeah. I think that the uh, the run from performance from her, ah. considering the amount of work she did on the bike, that's uh, that's some hidden under the radar stuff yeah. later on in the year. Well, that was good. And a quick word about Jodie Stimson, first time on the podium. Yeah, you know what? Uh, yesterday I saw her smash her face in warm up. Her nose is bleeding uh, down at the podium pontoon area well you know what she came back today tough and uh, she really wanted to get on that podium for the first time and you know what now that she's there the first time expect to see her a lot more of her I think in the next couple of years. Talking of podiums someone who's no stranger to podiums is Johnny Brownlee back after injury defending his title couldn't have made a bigger statement of intent could he? No nah, mate uh, <laughs> I was down in there back into the course and I saw him running and he he went past his coach Ben Bright and, and uh, he gave a little bit of a wink and you could see you know that it's it just a great fight between him and Javier Gomez and yeah, if it's not one Alistair Brownlee, yeah. it's the other Johnny Brownlee. So we're, we're dealing with a, a phenomenon here, and these, these kids are great. He was very emotional when he I interviewed that, yeah. him at the finishing line. You could see it actually, his, you know, his sort of facial expression, he was starting to welt up. And, and even coming down the finishing chute there, that 29-24, I think, was his 10K run split. And he, like his brother, was able to enjoy the last 100 meters. Pretty frightening. And what kind of battle are you going to have when you have those two guys hitting each other in Madrid? It might be a one-two Brownlee. Yeah, we'd come to that. What about what about Javier Gomez? I mean, second on the podium, a better race by by his own admission than he ran in San Diego, but he's still some way behind either of the Brownleys, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a bit of a co consolidation of his of his form. Uh, a lot better than San Diego, and and those points help towards yeah. uh, being the world champion at the end of the year. So he was happy. But uh, he knows that the mark was again made, and uh, if, uh, like I said, it was another Brownlee this time that he had to deal with. But uh, I'm sure he's going to be back. Uh, he looks hungry, you know. He doesn't look like he's desperate to fix mm. this issue straight away. And knowing Harvey, the champion that is, I think he'll come back with an answer. And Joe Silver Barrier on the podium again, still leading the standards. Third consecutive time that he's had a bronze. He misses the three-peat here, and really, I don't think he had a chance. I mean, Brownlee was just in another gear. Uh, ha Javier Gomez, I don't think, had anything to react the only guy who really probably could have gone today was Richard Murray, and he was in the third pack. He ran yeah. 29 low, not much slower than uh, Brownlee, but he was just in the wrong pack, and the swim is going to be the deciding factor for him. If he doesn't have a faster swim, he's going to be in trouble. Right, final question, chaps. In Madrid, Alistair versus Johnny, who wins? Everybody who loves triathlon wins. You're going to have a chance <laughs> to see some incredible racing of those two guys, and I think, you know what? Anything is possible, but we see two men who can run 29.30 and have another gear to go. That's impressive. So I missed the answer there. Johnny or Alistair? i got to go with Alistair. <laughs> what do you think, Chris? Uh, I'm going to go with Johnny. Either way, it's going to be brilliant in Madrid. We can't wait. You can't either. See you then.